On land, all of the Earth's monsters have been collected and are living together in a place called Monsterland. Views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. I see we have guests. Good evening, my children of the grave. I bid you welcome to the Haunted Hotel. I am the night manager and your host of horror, Mr. Graves. And I thank you for spending your evening with us. Let me call the Bell Beast and ready your tomb. Thank you. <laughs> Number. Thirteen. Now, while Fang busies himself, making your tomb livable. Come and join me for tonight's Dead Time Story as we present to you The Snake Woman starring John McCarthy and Susan Trevor. In 1890 England a doctor and scientist attempts to cure his wife's sick mind by injecting her with snake venom while she's pregnant. She soon gives birth to a daughter. The villagers call the devil's baby. And they burn down the family's home in an attempt to destroy her. Years later, a detective from Scotland Yard is sent to the village to investigate a rash of deaths caused by snake bite. Is there some kind of connection with these deaths and the so-called devil's baby? Let's find out. Now time for you. Pull up your tombstone. Crawl under your grave blanket. And snuggle close with your ghoul friend. I'll turn down the lights. And then begin tonight's dead time story. The Snake Woman. The film you're about to see is the story of strange happenings out on the bleak moors of Northumberland at the turn of the century. 
You will not find any official records in existence. Neither will you find the story in any fairy books. It is purely a legend handed down by the descendants of the inhabitants of that village who preferred to forget what started on that cold November night in the year 1890. Arthur, there's no sense in your carrying on like this, and it's no use screaming. Now, then, let's get this over so I can return to my work. Oh, I won't let you. Uh, Martha, you're not making sense. You've administered this dozens of times without all this nonsense. Oh, that snake poisoned in my blood for months, years. You don't know. Nobody knows what it will do. Of course I know what it will do. I know what it's done. It gave you back your mind when they all said you were hopelessly insane. I know that, but... Other investigators have employed Snape Venom in the treatment of hemophilia, epilepsy, rheumatism, hypertension, even cancer. But it is Horace Addison, your husband, who is the only hepatologist to have cured a sick mind with Snape Venom. But what about the baby? 
the baby. That snake poison flowing through my blood. What will it do to my unborn child? So that's it. Under your microscope, doesn't all new life look the same? Plant, fish, human, even serpent. That's true, but... Life is such a miraculous, delicate thing. What if this poison were to upset the balance? And instead of a normal, healthy child, ours were to be born a... That's ridiculous. Don't you see, it just shows that your mind is, is slipping away again. Now, Martha, just relax. No, no. Until the baby comes, I would rather take that chance. Well, I wouldn't. Besides being my wife, you're the living, breathing proof of the soundness of my theories. Those things are more important than a child. Not to me. Now, Martha, suppose we did neglect your treatment, and the child was born like you were mentally. You don't want that. It wouldn't be fair to the child, would it? Now, that's being sensible. Uh, what? It's coming. You sure? It's not due. Your poison. I, oh. I go and fetch Dr. Merton. A little girl. I do for her what I can. This poor woman. You mean? Your wife is very weak. Hardly a flicker of life. The child? Baby's cold. No chance of life. It's strange. It looks so alive, Aggie. Those eyes so wide open. It is evil. It has the eye. It is the devil's offspring. You speak like a witch. I am not a witch. But I have certain powers. I can see things. Why do you think no other midwife would come here? But you came. Out of pity for that poor woman. Because I have charms to ward off evil. Nonsense. Two crossed knives on the stairs at the full of the moon. This blessed cord to keep the spirits from the body. And this stone from the druid's cave to break all spells. Those eyes. I could swear I saw them move, then. Dr. Edison. I am puzzled by her reaction. There's something strange. Almost as if she had received a neurotoxic poison. Poison? I'm afraid. There's little hope. My baby? Yes, a girl, but that's impossible. The child can't live. Its blood was cold. Cold blood? I won't touch it. A thing of evil. The baby's cold as ice. Doctor, its eyes, so wide and staring, and they never close. Doesn't seem normal. The eyelids appear undeveloped. It can't close its eyes. Like a reptile. Let me see the child. No, Martha, it wouldn't be wise. Let me see my daughter.
Double to finish, George. Uh, Jimmy Lutt? Evening, Constable. Ah, uh, Susie. Well, Alfie, major evening quota of murderers, I suppose. Footpads mostly this fine evening, Barkus, old friend. Oh, and a few tugs and knifers. I tell you, Alfie, it's a shame you should go so unappreciated. It isn't every officer who can uncover such heinous offences in a village of 200. <laughs> The wife was expecting, sure enough. And didn't the evil thing look up and murder the poor, weak mother with one look? You mean Addison's wife is dead? Aye. And so would the serpent child be, too, if I hadn't been prevented. By what? By the father. I came to you all for help. Unless you go there with me now, we're all lost, all. Well, what are you thinking, Alfie? Aggie has the gift of sight, as well you know. If someone dead, it should be investigated. I've had my suspicions of Addison for some time now. The things he does with those ugly reptiles. Well, if you're going, I'll go too. Come on, lads. <laughs> Maybe Aggie was right. Maybe she should be destroyed. Ridiculous. There must be an explanation for the child's characteristics and reactions. There is, but the mother knew what it was. I was too blind to imagine. You're a research scientist, man, so am I. Can you imagine the excitement when the scientific world learns that the cold-blooded child was born alive? Millions of cold-blooded children are born alive. Serpent children. I'm surprised at you. It is of the utmost importance to human knowledge that your child's life be preserved at all costs. What was that? It's Aggie. She's bringing them in from the village. I didn't think they listened to a crazy old woman. There are many superstitious people in Northumberland. They believe in Aggie's magic. Then we must get the child away. Is there some place? The old shepherd's hut on the moor. Nobody ever goes there. I take her. But, mind you, I have to leave for Africa tomorrow morning. You know that. Tell the shepherd I'll call and fetch him in the morning. Good luck. Where can I go? Out through the back door. Be careful. 
here tonight. I don't understand. Ask him about his poor wife. Talk to Dr. Merton. You mind if we have a look around? Come in by all means. Where's Mrs. Addison? She's through there. Uh, please, don't disturb my specimens. There's something strange about a man consorting with wicked reptiles like these. There's nothing strange and snakes are not wicked. They're much maligned, highly intelligent, useful creatures. It was the serpent brought man's downfall. Mrs. Addison's dead, all right. With marks on her arm. Looks like she's been poisoned. Bitten by a snake, most like. Nonsense. Call the husband while I investigate. Where's the evil thing? The child, what has he done with it? She's gone with Dr. Merton. You mean you killed her like you killed the mother? With these slimy monsters? Absolute idiocy. Let's kill the slimy things, every last one of them. Stop it! We don't want them around here! Let's break them. Listen, my friend, you must do me a favor. Dr. Edison is in grave danger, and this newly born baby as well. It's only for tonight. It may mean the child's life. I don't know. But you must, man, you must. It's only humane. Her father will fetch her tomorrow morning. So where's, where's the harm? What about yourself? Can you not keep her for one night? But that is it. I have to leave for Africa tomorrow morning. Well? You're a good man. Thank you. What's got into you, Robbie? Come inside by the fire where this little thing will be warm. Robbie! Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. And best regard for town. Goodbye. Ah, goodbye, Take Doctor. Take care of everything. Come back soon. Have a good trip. Goodbye.
can't believe it. It's... It's 19 years, no, 20. Yes, it is. Dr. Merton, come back home after 20 years at last. For what reason, doctor? To retire. Our research in Africa was successful. Wonderfully so. Now it's finished. I see. I, I thought it might have been the... What? The wee girl you left here that night. I'll admit, I, I thought often of her while I was away, wondering about her and her father. Father? Why, yes. After he had come for her. Edison did come for his daughter. I waited here all the next day until after sundown. Then I went after him. In what was left of his snake house, I found Addison's body. All because it crows, you old woman. Where's the child? Where's she? I don't know. You don't know? Yes, I kept her here with me, even though the animals were strange with her. Strange? My sheep bolted at the sight of her. My old dog, Robbie, would not enter the house with, with Atheris in it. Ah. Atheris? Is that what you called her? I found the name in a book at her father's house. Atheris is the name of a sir. What? That you should have called her? I hate telling you, Doctor, but that one was unnatural. It's as if two forces of nature are fighting within her wee self. Good and evil. At times, she was the sweetest little tyke. Other times, well, like the dead sheep. And when I found my old dog, Robbie, stiff he was and swollen like as if he'd been poisoned. A tiny mark so long on his neck. <laughs> you mean to say the girl? <laughs> well, I can't prove it, but... Well, we've moved a lot easier around this house the last few years since she disappeared. And you let her go just like that, a small child. I searched the moors up and down, every crag, every cranny, but never a sound. I see. I am sorry. Whatever happened to the old Edison place? Oh, never a body goes near it anymore. Aggie Harker has half of them convinced that the ghost of Dr. Addison haunts the place in the form of a snake. And the other half? Guilty conscience, mainly. Remembering what they did to the girl's father. Well, since neither half concerns me, I think I'll have a look into it before I return to town. Well, it's good to see you back in Bellingham, Doctor. Thank you. Your Dead Time story this evening was filmed in just eight days by Carillon Productions Limited and released in England in 1961. It would then make its way here to the United States later in the year, being paired with Dr. Blood's Coffin as a double feature and released by United Artists. Originally, the film was given an X rating by the British Board of Film Commission, meaning that no one under the age of 18 would be allowed to see it. The studio, after making some unspecified cuts, resubmitted it, and it was then given an A rating, meaning it was still more suitable for adults, but had no specific age restrictions. It was rumored this film was rushed into production to cash in on the fad for period pieces which had been made popular from the films of Hammer Studios. Most of the leading cast in our dead time story have at least 
one foot in the horror grave genre. John McCarthy, who plays a detective Prentice, can be seen in 1958's The Electronic Monster, as well as roles in 1964's Dr. Strangelove and Goldfinger. Elsie Wagstaff, who plays Haggy Harker, can be seen in 1974's Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell from Hammer Studios, alongside of Peter Cushing in his final performance as Baron Frankenstein. And Arnold Marley, who plays Dr. Mouton, can be seen in 1957's The Abominable Snowman and 1959's the man who could cheat death. <coughs> it's time for tonight's monster question. In what Vincent Price film does Susan Travers, who plays a theorist, play a member of the medical profession? Your answer awaits at the end of tonight's Fear Fable. He's dead. My God, look. I can't believe it. The bite of a king cobra. A cobra? As a military surgeon in India, I treated hundreds of these bites. I couldn't possibly be mistaken. Now, if someone explain to me how a man in the north of England can suffer the bite of a king cobra. It's the curse. The what? That black thing that was born out on the moors near a score of years back. Mr. Barkus means the snake girl. Look, this is England, the 20th century, isn't it? You can scoff if you like, Colonel Wimborne. But how explain the fate of our town since that night? This isn't the first time something like this has happened. No. Every so often someone's found on the moors. Dead. With those same little marks. The cobra doesn't exist in England. Must 
find some logical explanation. You said you served in India, Colonel. Were there logical explanations for all the things you saw there? No, 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 that was different. Aggie Harker says we're all cursed until the serpent's child is destroyed. Oh, ridiculous. She has been seen, sir, by her victims. The looks in their eyes. Are you trying to say that this man was bitten alive by, by some kind of demon or something? As good a name as any? Well, you're wrong. He was struck by a cobra. There's not the slightest doubt about it. Maybe not. But you won't persuade anyone in this town of that. Perhaps I can. Come in. You sent for me, Inspector? Yes, Prentice, I did. They tell me you're our bright young man in scientific investigation. Well, I've had a good education, sir. And I feel with proper experience. Yes. I believe I can do a good job. Mm, as sure of yourself as all that, eh? And perhaps you're my man. Sit down. Just take a glance through that, will you please? What do you think of it? Is there any doubt, sir? Of what? That it was written by a crackpot. There certainly is doubt. Colonel Clyde Winborn is one of the most respected men ever to wear a British uniform. But even the best of men when they reach their dotage. I serve with the Colonel in India. Is that your opinion of me? I didn't mean to imply that... <sighs> Never mind. Your reaction is perfectly understandable. The curse of the serpent child haunting a 20th century English village. You have me worried, sir. For a moment I thought you were beginning to believe it. Hardly. But if Wimborne says this has caused a serious situation, he knows what he's talking about. Investigating local superstitions? Isn't that a little out of Scotland Yard's line? Strictly speaking, yes, but... This country owes a lot to Wimborne and to men like him. The least Scotland Yard can do is to grant him this favor. I gather I'm involved, sir. I want you to leave at once for Bellingham. You'll have full authority. Take whatever equipment you need and do whatever you think best. I want you to run this curse to Earth and to prove scientifically beyond anyone's shadow of doubt that it's utterly baseless. Yes, sir. If you can. What does that mean, sir? If you have any doubts of me? Oh, not of you, no. I was recalling a line from Hamlet. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamed of in your philosophy. I'm afraid I don't. Just don't get too smug, young man. Keep an open mind. Make your ideas fit the facts, not vice versa. If you're going snake hunting, you better have this. Thank you, sir. Well, good luck. Excuse me. Colonel Winborn's house, please. Over there. That way? Uh, straight ahead. Thank you. Not the most exciting assignment the yard has to offer, humoring an old man, eh, Prentice? Oh, that's all right, sir. I can imagine your reactions when you got my letter. If I hadn't had a friend at court, I don't think I'd dared write it. You mean the inspector? Yes, he assured me that you wouldn't have written unless the situation here was serious. It is, my boy. It is deadly serious. You mean there is a curse on the village? Well, there's something. After the incident of which I wrote, the man being bitten by the cobra, here in England, mind you, I checked the local death registry. And? Would you believe that this tiny community for nearly a score of years, has averaged more than one death a year from poisonous reptiles. But that's not possible. <laughs> not here? No, that's exactly what I thought. But it's all there in the records. Ask the residents, they'll verify it. They're scared to death, every one of them. Of the curse? Exactly. I can't believe that. There has to be an explanation. A perfectly logical scientific explanation. Well, there is one of sorts. Quite a few years ago, 
a world-famous herpetologist, Dr. Horace Addison, maintained an experimental laboratory out there on the moors. With a collection of live snakes? Yes. <laughs> then there's your answer. Almost. It's quite possible the natives were bitten by the descendants of Addison's reptiles after they'd killed him and wrecked his laboratory. Hey, what? Another drink. No, thanks. That was the beginning of the curse. It was the night Addison's daughter was born. Apparently, he'd been injecting snake venom to cure his wife's insanity. Sounds like the Middle Ages. Far from it. Addison was a marvel in his own field. However, yes? the mother died giving birth. Aggie Harker, the old midwife, who was considered something of a witch, was convinced that this little girl was strange. Strange? Yes. She convinced the village that the baby was evil, and that unless they destroyed it immediately, they would all be cursed. So they killed the father and destroyed the child? No, not the child. Somehow that was saved. Well, what became of it? It's hard to say. Some of the victims of the curse were found alive. And they claimed they'd been attacked, not by a poisonous snake, but by a beautiful girl. Hallucinations. Maybe. Do you know what this is? No idea. It's a snake charmer's flute. I picked it up in Asia. Anyone who plays it is said to possess a certain power over reptiles. Or perhaps music hath charms. Well, ever since the Garden of Eden, every civilization has regarded snakes with some kind of awe or dread. Parts of Asia, snakes are worshipped to this day. American Indians still perform their traditional snake dances. And in Bellingham, England? Well, maybe science can explain everything on this earth. I can't. Anyway, there's your problem, my boy. You can stay with me if you like. Where do you propose to begin? At the beginning, I suppose. Aggie Harker. If she's still alive. She's still alive. Her hut is over the hill there, out of town. You take the path to the right of the bald oak tree and you'll come to it. It's a pleasant walk of a morning. I'm going tonight. You are? What's the matter? Well, the latest would say you're taking your life in your hands. Then perhaps you'd better lend me this. In case I bump into any snakes or uh, snake girls if you like. Well, good night, my boy. And take care of yourself. Nervous? After all the stories I'd heard in the village, I was afraid everybody in Bellingham locked their doors from the inside at sundown. I'm not nervous. What are you doing here? Waiting for you. For me? You'd better explain. I heard your music. Why did you stop? You mean this? I never saw it before tonight. You must be kidding. Something about the sound. I never felt. Sit still. Don't move a muscle. What are you doing? Saving your life. It's gone. Why did you stop me? You'd have killed it. To keep it from killing you. Why should it do that? Because it's a poisonous snake. Isn't that reason enough? He was doing us no harm. He has a right to live. You really believe that? But you're trembling. It's so cold. 
won't be necessary. I must go. I'm worried about a friend. I'll be around here for a while. May I see you again? If you play for me. Oh, come now. Haven't we carried this far enough? Then you won't. If you want me to, but... You must go. Aggie Harker's expecting you. I didn't tell you I was going to Aggie Harker's. Now, Miss... Well... just poured it. Of course. I'm Charles Prentice, Miss Harker. I'm interested in how you knew I was coming. I expected you sooner. I was delayed. I met someone. Where? Well, out on the moor somewhere. The serpent child. <laughs> That's ridiculous. She was a beautiful girl. Have you not been told how it is here? Since the evil thing was born. Of course I have. Now that's why I came to you. I thought maybe you and I together could, well, solve the problem scientifically. You are wiser than I thought, young man. Perhaps we can. But not with your science. With mine. <laughs> Such images are called by different names in different places. Surely you don't believe this can destroy the curse of the serpent, child? Not by itself alone. And I was too close to the evil thing when it was born. By helping it to live, I lost the power to kill it. Not that I haven't tried. It requires your help. My help? Oh. You have a gun, young man. Oh, yes, but... Then you must use it. What? Take it. Now, fire three bullets into the image. This is... Fire three times. You see, it is done. 
What, I wonder? The curse is broken by science. That is how she will die. Three bullets from that gun. You will kill her. <laughs> I'll admit that things seem a little different this morning. Can you imagine? Me drawing my gun. Shooting at a stuffed dog. You know, she's absolutely balmy. I think she actually believes in all that mumbo jumbo. A lot of people do, more than you imagine. Poor teeth. Hmm, thanks. You know, what bothers me is this girl you say you saw. Say? Of course I saw her. I'm trying to think of any local maid who'd... Well, who'd venture out alone on such a night? Well, one did venture out, I can assure you. I put my arm about her. She was as flesh and blood as you or I, and scared half to death. Why do you say that? Oh, just when I touched her. Her skin was as cold as ice. Cold? Did you say cold? Yes. What is it? What did I say? Cold. Not a chance for life. Yet the baby lived. Whom are you quoting? The old doctor, Merton. He attended the birth of Edison's daughter. The child was born with cold blood. And that means something? Reptiles are all cold-blooded creatures. <laughs> oh, come now, you're beginning to sound just like Aggie. <laughs> yes, I suppose I am. Anyway, you couldn't have seen the serpent girl. Why not? Well, you didn't die. Any of the natives will tell you, no man looks into her eyes and lives. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, I wonder if I might keep this for a day or so. Certainly, but what for? That girl I met. She thinks I have hidden musical talent. She wouldn't promise to see me again until I agreed to play for her. I think I need a drink. Come on. Here you are, Doctor. Roddy! Let me. It's no use, Doctor. My lad's dead. The fangs of a serpent. Do you suppose she did it? We all came home alone. I went out to look and found him out on the moors. Like this. Something's got to be done. Killing young boys in broad daylight now. It must be a snake. It has to be. It can't be that. Poor man. He came here to retire, and now all this is affecting his mind. She'll pay. Snake or fiend or witch, whatever she is, I'll make her pay for murdering my son. Come and have a drink, Garrow. You've had a shock to make us all, should I? Something's bothering you, Colonel. Now, why don't you tell me? You're right. I suppose we all hate to say farewell to our pet theories, but... But the facts don't seem to fit. Well, I was just on the point of recognizing a similarity, a pattern in these occurrences. But this one. Boy was bitten in broad daylight. Not by a cobra, mind you, but by a fer de lance. Fer de lance? Yes, it's a species of pit viper from the French Antille, sometimes known as the rat-tailed viper. But you can be sure about the difference in the two bites, I mean. Yes, one secretes a hemolytic poison, the other a neurotoxic. I've treated enough snake bites in my time to distinguish the symptoms. I see. Then that means there are at least two poisonous species running loose in this countryside. And it disposes of our snake girl. With all her talents, I can't believe that she could strike like two different serpents secreting two different poisons. Hmm. Think it'll convince Aggie Harker? I wonder. Give us another one, Barkis. You've had enough, Doro. You've been drinking all day. Come on, just one more. Snake or fiend or whatever she is, she'll pay for killing my boy. She'll pay wherever she is. She can't hide from Doro. Get you. You 
killed my son. I'll get you. You won't get away from me. Being I'll get you. There you are. I knew I'd find you. There's your answer. The end of a legend. A perfectly normal, everyday dead snake. Third allowance. Same that bit the boy. Why not put this on display somewhere, Constable? Do the people good. Reassure them. I suppose. I'll write my official report for the yard and post a copy beside it. As simple as that, young man. These things usually are, once you get to the basis of them. And you're satisfied that you have. You'll do nothing further. What else is there I can do, Doctor? Perhaps nothing. But there's something I can do. Something I should have done years ago. You look almost disappointed, Colonel. I am. Because there is no supernatural curse? No. Because the explanation is not as simple as I hoped. What does that mean? Look, my boy, I think we'd better go home and discuss this thing in the morning. Sorry for you. It was not your fault that you were born what you were. I should never have allowed you to live, but since I have, it is my duty to. <sighs> I'd be interested to hear your explanation. What happened to Darrow and his son? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Is it? Certainly. The boy was struck by the snake, the father got drunk, went out to kill it, and was bitten himself. On the neck? Well, the snake could have fallen on him from a branch. The further lance never climbs. Or oh, Darrow could have stumbled and fallen, he was drunk? Possibly. We'll pass that for the moment. But there is something else, something that requires a little more explanation. Yes. The boy was killed by the fur de lance. But the father's wound held cobra venom. What? That's why I was so disappointed. The boy's death is easily explained. There's one other answer, Colonel. Now, you could be mistaken. Uh, about the two bites, I mean. Well, none of us is infallible. True enough. And if you're convinced of that, my boy, you'd better get on the evening train and go back to London and tell the inspector there to ignore future letters from elderly crackpots. All right. Didn't mean that, sir. But... Oh, it's quite understandable. You have a logical scientific mind, and this business defies logic and science. Ordinary science. I'm sorry, sir. Now, you have a theory about this, haven't you? And, well, I've been too smug to listen. Well, not exactly a theory, but I have gone over Addison's research data very carefully. And I've been wondering whether Aggie Harker wasn't right from the beginning. About the curse? Oh, no. 
about the child being born with serpent-like characteristics. You really think that's possible? Well, for months before the child was born, Alice was injecting an extract of cobra and other venoms into his wife's veins in order to control her mental state. Hmm. You told me about that before. Yes, I know. I've been thinking about it since so much has happened. There's so much we don't know and so little we do about life, how it begins, why all life seeds should appear identical under the finest microscope. If one will produce a tiny fish, another a bird or a human being, another a monstrous whale. Or a snake? Exactly. Suppose this cobra venom flowing constantly through the mother's veins had an effect on the new life inside her, an effect we know nothing about as yet but which could account for a baby being born without eyelids, with cold blood, and other ophidian characteristics. Such as? Such as the secretion of venom, and a peculiar attraction to the music of a snake charmer's pipe. I've heard enough. And if you're suggesting that that beautiful girl I met could be... Look, my boy, you go back to London, where you belong. Where things are exactly as they seem. You're out of your element here. Possibly I am. Thanks for your hospitality, Colonel. Don't mention it. We are sorry to see you go, sir. You are? You really are? Well, of course, sir. We all had that such high hopes when you came up from London. You know, even Aggie said that... Said what? Well, that the certain girl stays for number now that you're here. I see. So the whole village thinks I failed, eh? Of course not, sir. I mean, after all, there, there are things that we ordinary mortals are powerless against. I tell you, there's a perfectly logical explanation. There has to be. But of course there is, sir. It's just, well, sometimes even the best of us look only where we want to look, see only what we want to see. Make our theories fit the facts and uh, not vice versa. What was that, sir? A smart man warned me about that. Tell me what this does to you. Well, sir... It's not very good, is it? Now, don't you get discouraged, sir, with a little practice. With practice, it would still be terrible. No normal girl would ask to hear that again, would she? <laughs> not unless she'd had too many of those. <laughs> Watch my bags for me, will you, Polly? Then you're not leaving. Not for a while. But if someone asks for you, like the Colonel, what shall I say? Tell him I've gone looking for a girl who uh, appreciates my music. But... I still love you, Polly. Don't worry. Skin. I don't understand. All serpents shed their skins regularly. Why shouldn't she? Then it's really true. Yes, of course. What are you doing here? I came to see you. But I was supposed to leave. I only just decided. You couldn't leave. You have a destiny. Ridiculous. I just came... To find her, but she's not here. And she won't be. She's to be found at Addison's ruins. Now, hurry. All right. I'll go there to humor you. But I've no intention of killing anybody or anything. Well, that's about the situation, Inspector. I'm very glad you called. Yes, yes, I am bitterly disappointed. What, stay over? Wait for the relief, but, but he's already gone. 
Well, that is, he was going on the night train in about a quarter of an hour. Well, yes, I'll try and catch him. No, not at all, Inspector. I, I'm very grateful for everything you've done. Yes, I'll look forward to it. Goodbye. That young man from Scotland Yard, has he been here? Well, he was here, sir, but... but these are Princess's bags, aren't they? Well, yes, sir. He asked me to look after them for him. But if he's catching the night train... Oh, he isn't, sir. Well, that is, he won't now. It's too late. Look, Polly, please tell me where he is. I have an urgent message for him from London. Well, I, I would tell you, sir, if I knew. Do you mean he went off without saying a word? Well, no, sir. He was acting very strange. How do you mean, strange? Well, he had a funny sort of little pipe thing that he wanted to play for me, and... And then he asked me how I liked it. Had he been drinking? Oh, only a little, sir. He wasn't what you'd call squiffy. I see. And then? Oh, sir, it was horrible. Uh, now I'm in the music. You told him that? Yes, sir, you know, but the funny thing was, he, he didn't seem to mind. It, well, it was as though he wanted me to say that. Yes, now, love, Polly, this is all very interesting. But then he said... Said what? Well, something very strange. He said if you was to ask for him to tell you he'd gone looking for someone... Well, a girl, I think, who'd appreciate his music. You sure of that? Is that exactly what he said? Oh, yes, sir. Is there something wrong? I think there is. Something terribly wrong. He doesn't realize the danger. Then you know where he is. I think so. I'm almost sure. Look, Polly, get some men around. We may need some help. Tell them to meet me outside my house. All right, leave it to me, sir. Not here. He's gone to meet her. Just as it was destined. Stop it, you crazy old crone, and tell us where he's gone. The home of the evil one. Addison!
Atheris. Atheris. Where are you? Atheris. I promised I'd play for you, remember? Or do you prefer the music of the shepherd's pipe? Whatever you are, whatever you've done, we understand. It wasn't your fault. It was your father's. You can't help being what you are, what he made you, any more than any of us can. Uh, if you'll trust me, I'll see that no one harms you. You'll be safe from others and safe from yourself. No more killings. Well, will you trust me, Atheris? Princess, where are you? I'm here, Colonel. That's exactly the way it happened, page by page and word for word. And there are witnesses. Your friend, the colonel, the woman, half the village. Three bullets. Even that aspect, sir. But, sir, that's the only copy. I know. Then you're afraid they won't believe it, upstairs. No, my boy. I'm just afraid they might. Another cover-up of the supernatural. But we all know the real truth is out there. Don't we, my children of the grave? Now, let's reveal your answer to tonight's monster question. In what Vincent Price film did Susan Travers play a member of the medical profession? It was 1971's The Abominable Dr. Fides, from American International Pictures. She played the role of Nurse Allen and meets her end by being devoured by locusts as part of the Ten Plagues of Egypt curse concocted by Dr. Fides, played by Vincent Price as his revenge on the medical team he held responsible for the death of his wife. <laughs> Vang tells me your tomb is prepared. But before you go slinking off to your own 
frightmares. Let's see what terrors are lurking for you here on your next day at the Haunted Hotel. This is the dawning of the Age of Colossus. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Charles Forbin. In a few moments, Colossus will address us directly. This is the voice of world control. I bring you peace. It may be the peace of plenty and content, or the peace of unburied death. The choice is yours. Obey me and live or disobey and die. The frightening story of the day man built himself out of existence. Colossus, The Forbin Project. It's making you a prisoner. Shock, horror, suspense. Created with all the technological brilliance of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Colossus is the ultimate in sophisticated computers. I'm going to try to convince the computer that you're my mistress. And that therefore I have to be given the opportunity to see you regularly in private. That way we can pass information back and forth. Four times a week. Insane. When do you think you'll be able to attempt the overload? Colossus sees all, senses all, knows all, controls all armaments and all defenses. When this emotionless creation becomes the master of man, the result is catastrophic. The Supreme Council of the USSR has ordered as of 2300 hours Moscow time tomorrow. The activation of an electronic brain, exactly like ours, which they call God. They built Colossus, supercomputer with a mind of its own. Then they had to fight it for the world. The missile has just been launched. It is heading towards the Sayan Sibiesk oil complex. Guardian has retaliated. Retaliated? It may be too late, sir. Oh, my God. Colossus, The Forbin Project, your next Dead Time Story. Be sure to make your reservation, and please like The Haunted Hotel on Facebook. Until then, I bid you good night and rest in peace. <laughs>